I saw this clip before and I haven't been able to play it for ages because I keep fucking forgetting. But this is absolutely an amazing clip because you never, ever see an interaction like this ever in your life. Ever, ever, ever. You've never seen this before. You have never seen anyone talk to this person in this way. And it's absolutely hilarious. So this is um, a lady called Eliza Schlesinger. She's a stand-up comedian and clearly a friend of Rogan's because I don't think he would allow anybody else to come on his show and talk to him this way. So she was on the Joe Rogan, um, you know, podcast, the Joe Rogan Experience, sorry. And I guess she's promoting a new comedy special that's out now at the moment. And they have this really weird exchange on a podcast. And legitimately, I've in my life never, ever, 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 ever seen anyone talk to Joe like this. So big up Brochina Depot for posting this absolutely crazy clip. It has a session Joe and Joe Rogan on a GRE experience. I, I was I, I liked Elizabeth Warren. She's Why? cool. She, I just like same. I liked her. I like it's I like her tenacity. Artist. Yeah, but but <laughs> OK, who isn't? Yeah. Bernie Sanders. OK, but did you vote for Bernie? Artist. He wasn't available to vote for. Did you vote have. in the? I didn't vote for in the primary. In the primaries, right? Yeah. Uh, I did. But I had him on my podcast, and he was very sincere. Okay, cool. I've I had think... my mom on my podcast. You want to flex? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I think he's very sincere. I... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, where's the look? There was, I think I skipped a look, maybe a buffer. There was a look here that flipping Joe Rogan gave her, like one of, like he's looking at one of his flipping daughters, like, hey man, watch, watch how you speak to me. Look at this look. Hold on, where is it? Very sincere. Okay, cool. I've had my mom on my podcast. You want to flex? I'm just saying. I think he's very sincere. I oh, I, I thought I, there was. I, I like. Maybe I'm imagining things, but I thought there was a little look that he did prior that was flipping horrendous. But have you ever heard anybody talk to Joe Rogan like that? God Almighty, man! What an incredible, incredible encounter. The funny thing is about it is that I remember Eliza being a bit weird and a little bit standoffish and hard to kind of like when she was on before on the Joe Rogan podcast. I think she was promoting another special, and she shared this story about her feeling like the guy who was asking her and her friends for a lighter one day was a creep or something. It was a very bizarre story, but basically she made it seem as if she read all these bad intentions into this really innocuous interaction with the dude who asked for a lighter. And I remember people going absolutely crazy, like, well, what is wrong with this woman? Why is she so defensive and all this sort of kind of things? But, you know, she's maybe a feminist. That probably maybe answers a lot of the questions about how she kind of sees men. But then I also think in general especially off the back of this clip I'm going to play next. Um, yeah, actually, got this clip I'll play next. Might understand, might explain it. I think being a somewhat, you know, she's not my, she's not for me, don't get me wrong, and I don't really care for her in the slightest, but, you know, amongst comedians, she must look like fucking Pamela Anderson in her prime, right? In terms of what comedians, especially female comedians, look like. So for an attractive female coming up, or for an attractive woman coming up in flipping the comedy scene, it must be really difficult to navigate on your own because essentially you're doing it on your own. Yeah, you're going to find your peers, but you're kind of doing it on your own. You're working maybe a part-time job. Even if you've got you know, money from your parents, you're a trust fund kid, you're going to all these comedy clubs on your own, you're going to do open mics on your own, you're going to do write, what's the thing called? You're going to writer's room on your own. Everything's kind of on your own. You have to kind of navigate this scene by yourself surrounded by men and then probably is very difficult to navigate especially in hollywood where people are quite predatory there's this weird kind of underlying kind of um currency exchange between sexual favors and and um and career progression which is real because i'm sure it does exist and i'm sure there are people as gross as it is who actually follow through their promises where they say hey if you touch my ding ding i'm gonna get you a guest spot on whatever i'm gonna get you a writing gig at this show i'm gonna get you a guest appearance or walk through on flipping kirby enthusiasm i'm sure that exists i'm sure and they follow through with it and it's kind of a transactional thing but imagine having to navigate around that and not knowing if every guy you talk to is going to be on that kind of time. So that maybe would contribute to someone like an Eliza having a backup immediately, always kind of being ready to kind of defend herself and bite. Cause that's what she kind of she feels like. She feels like a fucking Doberman. Do you know what I mean? Like she's always ready to flip and go at you. If you ever come <laughs> lighter, she's like, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Ah, pen. Ah. So she kind of feels like she's got that kind of vibe about her. So I can kind of understand why she's like that. But the only thing that makes her look bad in this pod is that 
clearly Joe is an is I wouldn't say an ally, but he's a friend and he clearly likes her as a person. And I think in general, Joe tends to kind of gravitate to people that people don't necessarily like or people that are kind of marmite because I've got a feeling a lot of his other male comic friends, especially someone like an Irish affair, wouldn't get along with Eliza Schlesinger, right? Or maybe she wouldn't get along with them. The same way I don't think Eliza Schlesinger would get along with a Burt Kreischer, right? So I'm assuming a lot of his male friends don't like her, but he kind of goes out of his way to kind of be like, put her arm around her and say, hey, you're one of mine. Um, I like you. I think you're funny. I think you're a killer. You murder all that good stuff, and you just maybe appreciates different versions or different types of comedy, whatever it may be. So she should be comfortable in that scenario that he's cool, but she's still snappy because every time she looks at him, she just sees a man. She just sees a toxic flipping um, male, or whatever it may be. So I just think she doesn't, you know, have that in mind. And clearly. When it comes to fucking annoying people, she doesn't necessarily care because as Fingy mentioned here in the flipping chat, uh, Brian said, wouldn't you think if you're going on a show that's watched by literally millions of people, you'd be more presentable? She looks like she just got out of bed. Yeah, exactly. But that's, I think, the, the, the kind of flossy and swaggy bit about her. She clearly doesn't care. And maybe it's a defense mechanism. I remember, who was it? Whitney Cummings saying the same sort of thing. Whitney Cummings for a long time would kind of, especially when it's in the comedy scene space sort of thing, when, especially when she was hanging out with the boys more. Now she's kind of, you know, ever since Chris Leo got cancelled, she kind of abandoned the lads, which makes sense in it because you don't want to be associated or kind of, you know, seem to be condoning the actions of some of these guys. But ever since she kind of, you know, stepped away from them she started to kind of tap into her womanhood a lot more you see her looking a lot more cute a lot more pretty and all that sort of stuff i remember her in podcast saying prior that she purposely dressed herself down she didn't want to look hot because she didn't want people to kind of or she didn't want to maybe beautify or pretty herself because she didn't want people to kind of get the wrong idea and also she didn't want any any unneeded attention coming towards her so maybe eliza does the same thing just like you know what fuck this i'm I'm in a i'm in a comedy space anyway and i want to kind of you know get away with what the men get away with if they can get away with going to a comedy store without you know changing their boxes in a week and wearing mismatched socks and clearly look like they haven't brushed their hair or brushed their teeth or showered in general then i should be able to do it too but you know it just comes across weird when it's women because you know unfortunately there is a double standard but her really snapping at joe was absolutely hilarious because like i said before i have never in my entire life seen anybody and i mean anybody speak to joe that way and i think obviously you can only get away with it if you're his friend and obviously you can only get away with it if you truly don't give a fuck about him and what he can do to your career you're just there because you know he told you to kind of come there sort of thing um but yeah so big up eliza schlesinger for being an absolute rebel rouser for really a a adding another element to the whole situation and just causing a whole lot of chaos She's really, really hilarious. I'm not going to lie. Really, really hilarious. But for all the wrong reasons, of course, isn't it? Because I watched some of her stand up and it's not for me personally. But hey, what can you do?